Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Robert. And we're the Film Flamers. Today we're bringing you our uh, best of 2018. And this is a really casual list of all the horror movies that we enjoyed in 2018. And maybe some that we didn't enjoy so much. Exactly. And and maybe, uh, maybe some that we're looking forward to in 2019. That's right. We know that a lot of podcasts and even written media have already done their best of 2018 list. And honestly, I had to do a some pretty frantic catch up toward the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So um, I watched a whole bunch and I mean, none of mine are really listed in any sort of sequential order. There are just some that I liked a lot more than others. And I mean, I have things to say about them, I guess. Well, should we start with what we didn't enjoy as much? Yeah, because there's really not that many that I just didn't love. Yeah, there's only really two that I have on my list of notables uh, that I wrote down that I didn't enjoy that other people might have enjoyed more. And to me, the bottom of my list is Mandy. <laughs> yeah, I am right there with you. I was not a super huge fan of Mandy. Yeah, it, maybe it's because I was supposed to be high. Apparently, that's what you're supposed to do when you watch this film. But I just wasn't really, I just could not get into it. Uh, there was some cool stuff in there visually, uh, certainly, but it just... It, it, yeah, no. Yeah, I think I was like borderline tipsy when I was watching it. I was, I was doing a little drinking. It was a mess and it was trying to be artsy and just wasn't artsy and like it was yeah. a little, yeah. Now I do know that some people have um, felt the same way that we did and rewatched the movie and feel different. So, I mean, perhaps given some time, it might be due for a, a review to see if we've changed our minds. But currently it's just not near the top of my list. And I know that a lot of people in the horror community were just like going ape shit over this movie. And I think... I think I was just expecting something that I didn't get. Yeah. And speaking of something that and expecting something that we didn't get, uh, the other thing that I rated pretty low was Anna and the Apocalypse. And of oh course, my God. we already done a bonus episode on this where we kind of did our hot take and we kind of went to the theater and we actually watched this together at Alamo Draft House. And we came into that theater and we were just like, we could not wait to look at each other and go, this movie sucked. That's right. <laughs> we this just was, did not enjoy this movie. This was a Patreon conversation. And, um, I mean, I know a lot of people love this movie, and it just was not for me. No. Yeah. For various reasons, and we go into that on our Patreon. But That's right. if, if you're interested to see what we had to say, uh, try not to attack us wholesale just from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Do your homework and look at what, what our uh, theories are behind that. But there was a for me there was like a slew of movies that were like in that you know three out of five or three and a half out of five range, and for me like the Nun, the Endless, Ghost Stories, those were all in like the three range where they were just like good, but not super memorable to me. And and I'm sorry, Robert, but I also included Hereditary as as a three out of five on my list. I. Okay, so if we're going to have that conversation, I guess we should get some of these bigger ones out of the way, right? I mean, uh, Hereditary, I liked when I saw it in the theater. I thought that Toni Collette was fantastic. Oh, in sure, it. yeah, and I, definitely. I, I still believe that she's fantastic. Without her, I probably would have rated a two and a half or something. You know? I mean, the movie does have its flaws. I think that it's a little convoluted, but I mean, as far as watching good horror movies, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. So, fair enough. Um, and of course, I, I get in, past that into my three and a half star range, kind of, and that's where I get into like Halloween um, and Revenge and the new Suspiria. You know what's funny is that I was looking forward to Halloween so much this year, mm -hmm. and when I, we were talking about doing this, you know, favorite horror movies of 2018 episode, uh, and I was making my list. I didn't even think about Halloween. In fact, I forgot it even came out this year until you just <laughs> said it. So I don't know. And I liked the movie. So, I mean, maybe it didn't make that good of an impression that I just totally forgot about that until just now. No, it was. It's not very memorable at all, but it's just it's it's, uh, you know, solidly good. It just was. I mean, it was okay. good. Uh, something from the list that you just said was The Endless. And I, I did watch that uh, in December and I liked it. Very much. I didn't think that I was going to going into it just based on what the, the plot that I had read about it. But it turned out to be an enjoyable movie for. Yeah, know, it, it held my interest. It, it held my interest yeah. basically the whole way. I was never really bored, but they had this epic like Lovecraftian Cthulian kind of poster going on. And so I was like really looking forward. I always look forward to these like Lovecraftian movies and I always just want more, you know, and it would basically it was just like a stage play or it could have been easily translated to a stage play where they're just kind of in a camp the whole time talking about the plot. Yeah. And so they do a good job. And of course the two main actors in it are also the directors, but I just, I wanted more from that. And, uh, 
maybe it was just me expecting something a little bit bigger budget or something, but it it's it's well paced, I guess. Um, but that's that's almost as much as I can say for it. There's some funny parts in it. Um, it reminded me of Lost, as far as like there's there's like this esoteric kind of mystery going on under under the scenes and no one's talking about, but. I think that once once the movie got started and I sort of figured out what was going on, I mean, as best you can in watching this movie, I mean, I I was surprised at it because honestly, it's really not the kind of movie that I typically would like. Yeah. And it was almost like I was almost mad at it for being too lighthearted, you know, for what it was. And I really wasn't mad at it for that. I'm glad that, you know, it sort of broke the things up with some of the, the, the comedy relief. Yeah. Right. But um, I mean, it, it was an enjoyable movie. I know that um, Rotten Tomatoes lists it really high. What about ghost stories? Because you like uh, anthologies. Right? I do. And I uh, at our very first Hot Take episode from way back in September, I think that we released it on our normal feed instead we did. of Patreon. Yeah. And I talked about ghost stories because I was really looking forward to seeing that movie. And I do love on- anthology movies. And... It was really good, just right up until the end, and the end just killed it for me. And yeah. while I normally don't mind spoiling things for people, this is just one of those things I'm not going to. Yeah, right? whenever a horror movie or any other movie, for that matter, kind of goes into the it was all a dream trope, that's when I kind of lose interest. Yeah, so I'm just like, and that's not necessarily, you know, what happens at the end, just in case, you know, there's no real spoiler alert there. But, uh, I mean, the ending just totally killed that movie for me. However, that being said... The stories in that movie are fantastic. Some of them really are, and they were effective, and I actually did get creeped out. Yeah, I was scared in the, the first story, for sure. And I thought the acting was pretty good, too. I mean, decently. Mm-hmm. Um, but that ending just ruined it for me. So I couldn't even, I wouldn't even put that in my top five of 2018. Yeah, so the endless and like ghost stories, they were like my three out of fives. You know, they were just good or almost meh. But uh, like, but like I said, like Halloween was like the 3.5 revenge was 3.5 and you're the one that had me see revenge. And I, I believe I watched it with you. Yeah. Yeah. I love revenge. That was the second time that I had seen it. I had subsequently watched it again. And this is a shutter exclusive, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's a French movie and shutter got the rights to it after it like made the festival rounds, but it is English language. I mean, it's yeah. Just so it's partly that. in French, partly in English. I mean, there's, if you're afraid of subtitles, there's no reason not to watch this movie because they're very minimal. Yeah, I don't remember really having much confusion there at all. It's a very yeah. straightforward plot, and it's very enjoyable and watchable. It's so good. I just like, I mean, it's it's really overly bloody in certain places, and but not overly violent, you know? It's just, it's a, a weird mix of everything that I think horror fans love. I think that the, the actress in that movie does a phenomenal job. Yeah, I think know? the problems that I had with it were more like story-based issues. Like, uh, she's kind of like this flighty, you know, kind of just girly girl and all of a sudden her character transitioned to this badass and they kind of explain that in a few ways in the plot but it's just such a transition that it's like it's almost jarring like this character would not do this like that she would not be capable of doing something yeah but you never know what you're going to be like in those situations that's true you know so you kind of have to give it the benefit of the doubt but it was a it was a leap of faith a little bit yeah and there's a lot of things that are completely unbelievable in that movie you know but i mean it's a horror film and so sometimes you just have to give it a pass but i really really enjoyed revenge quite a bit and i think that is saying something i think that um a lot of people question whether or not 2018 was a good year for horror in general um i i think that it was a decent year for horror but i think that 2018 is like a phenomenal year for women in horror well i think i think 2018 was great for horror honestly we didn't get as much huge like amazing things like we didn't get another of the witch or it follows or something like that um but there's things that have come close or even just as good and in different ways the last thing that i had rated 3.5 was actually suspiria the new suspiria which we had done a a hot take on i had rated it a three and you had rated a four and so we kind of combined our score to like a three and a half Mm -hmm. and um, i think my the more i think about that film um the more i understand what they were trying to do and understand what it was uh, I think of it fa- more fondly than that, but I don't, you know, I think my score might've got up to 3.5, you know, and I would, I do want to watch it again. Yeah. I'm looking forward to watching it. And now that it's released on digital, I think as of this week, like I will probably watch it a couple more times for sure. And years later, I'm sure I'll watch it again, but I stand by my four. I really enjoyed Suspiria quite a bit. My only four was Upgrade. Oh my gosh, I love Upgrade. Yeah, I would give it a five, actually. Solid, good, almost, yeah, it's just brilliantly paced, really interesting. Um, it Yeah, it just is great from the beginning to end. So, so good. I watched Upgrade 
randomly one night. I was just like scrolling through different movies that came out in 2018. And I was like, all right, I'll give this a shot. I know some people who like it. And I was floored by how much I loved this movie. In fact, I messaged Chris right after I watched it. And I was like, go watch this movie right now. You can thank me later on. I yeah. was like, it's fantastic. And I didn't like absolutely fall in love with anything this year. And that's probably why I only gave it a four is because I had to compare it to my 4.5s. And my 4.5s, there's only two. And there's nothing rated higher than these two movies for me this year. And one of them is not actually a movie. But one of them is A Quiet Place, which I rated four and a half. And then, of course, uh, Netflix's series The Haunting of Hill House, I rated four and a half. Both of these were phenomenal pieces of horror this year. Uh, especially The Haunting of Hill House, which is basically, you know, like eight or ten movies in one. Um, But that's essentially what it is, is one long-form film. And it was amazing. It was great. And I think people don't give it as much credit because, you know, it's not a film. But I would would put it at the same height or the same pedestal as I would A Quiet Place. I agree. I, I really enjoyed The Haunting of Hill House. A lot. And I, I, I too would call it a movie because I know that that director makes movies typically and he just made a very long movie. I don't know that I would rate it in the 4.5 area. I mean, it'd probably be closer to 3.5 to a 4 for me, but I mean, it was really enjoyable and I will watch that again as well. I had some movies. I mean, if we're going on a scale of five, right, there were a couple of movies that I would throw five in there. Upgrade for sure, I would rate a five. I can see myself watching that movie over and over and over again. Yeah, but I'm always more like analytical than you are. So for me, like a five is like a perfect movie. Oh, I would call it a perfect movie. Like Mm. literally, I loved it so much. The only other movie that I liked more than Upgrade this year was a movie called What Keeps You Alive. Oh, wow. So that would be your favorite of the year. Yeah, it was my favorite horror movie this year. It um, was a recommendation uh, by Brock from Cocktail Party Massacre. He had posted something about it on Twitter, and I had never even heard of it. And so I, I went back and messaged him. I was like, what was the movie that you randomly met, like, were talking about? And so I sat down and watched it, and it is the, the most phenomenal movie. Hmm. And... He said going into it, don't don't read any synopses and don't watch any trailers. And he's right. The least you know about this movie going into it, the better. All I know about it is it has lesbians. Yes. it's. I mean, there's, there's lesbians. So, I mean, maybe I'm a little biased because there's a little gay stuff going on. But, I mean, it was just a fantastic movie. Okay, well, it's definitely on my list. I still haven't gotten around to seeing it. Uh, that and um, Are We Not Cats is still on my to-do list as yeah. far as watching. I have not seen that yet. I really want to. Yeah. In fact, I mean, other movies from 2018 that I haven't seen that I really want to would be like Are We Not Cats, Overlord, I really want to see because yeah, I've heard list, some yeah. great things about that. And I still haven't watched The Nun. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's one that I rated a solid three. Um a couple of movies that we haven't talked about yet that I also really liked. There's a, a French movie, also in English, uh, called The Night Eats the World. Um, it's a really interesting take on, you know, a tired zombie formula. And I think we all know at this point how much I like zombies anyway. But uh, a man sort of wakes up after a New Year's Eve party to find that the world has been overrun by zombies. And he thinks he's the only person left alive. And it's really just like his story from inside an apartment building. And mm. it's just a really fantastic piece piece of like minimalist zombie film okay yeah so we we still got some watching to do but we got the gist of basically of 2018 i think and so these are pretty much our recommendations we fairly much align across the board on these uh so you can trust us listeners we know what we're talking about yes do and if we haven't mentioned something that you like quite a bit from 2018 just let us know and we're more than willing to give it a watch in fact i mean we've seen so many things this year and that really doesn't even like breach the surface yeah and if you disagree with uh with us on something like mandy and you don't think it's a steaming pile of crap tell us what drug to take so that we'll enjoy it (laughs) and bring it to the house because i don't like to leave to find those drugs yes all right so we have a lot of films coming up in 2019 it's very hopeful um first off we are really interested in uh, the prodigy coming in february Oh, yes. I really want to see that movie. We saw this trailer during End of the Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yeah. It was the best thing about watching End of the Apocalypse. And I screamed out loud like a small child. One of these jump scares. We so, both I mean, jumped. That's yeah. right. I mean, like... This and that is... was in the trailer. So we've been fooled by trailers before, and that's going to happen. So we'll see what happens with this film. God, I'm I really hope it doesn't suck. It. But in March, we already have Jordan Peele's next film called Us. Yes. And I can't believe we're getting that so quickly. Like, I'm... Like, I just saw a trailer for it. It's, like, literally coming out, like, you know, very, very soon. So... And it looks 
phenomenal. It does. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's so neat to like. So it's been so long since we've seen sort of a horror director come into their own, right? Mm -hmm. And become what he will be considered, you know, like a pantheon of horror directors at some point. It's been a long time since we had a good Wes Craven or a good John Carpenter, someone new come up. It's a good new vision in horror that every single movie they make is just like top notch. And I really think that he's going to fit the bill. And it's so surprising because he has such a huge comedy background, but I think he has a real good eye for horror. And I don't know. Like I'm thinking like eventually like he's going to switch to dramas. And so we're not going to get that horror icon. That God, we I hope not. I really just want him to do that. But regardless of what, you know, if he, if he has, if he knocks this one out of the park, like he did with uh, Get Out, then he'll be an icon no matter what he does next. So oh, it doesn't true. matter. Well, I think that people are going to flock to this movie regardless. In April, we've got Pet Cemetery remake. I was really on the fence about this because I like the original and I love the novel so much. And then I saw what they did with it a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And I think that this movie, I have some high hopes for this movie, especially with the trailer that came out. Yeah. I'm going in with blank canvas. I, I'm not one of those people that's completely in love with the original pet cemetery. I thought there were parts that are really good. Have you read the book? Uh, no. Uh, and there were like, I tried to cause my dad had it when uh-huh. I was a kid and he was like, you're not ready for this. Yeah. Okay. So. so I've read almost all of Stephen King's work and some of it scares me and some of it doesn't, but pet cemetery is by far the scariest piece of like fiction. I've ever read in my life. Okay. So. Well, I'm hoping they do it justice. Uh, also in April is The Curse of La Llorona, which, of course, I believe is part of the Conjuring universe, or it's kind of a wink and a nod to the Conjuring universe. And it it's the so. same actor from, like, the priest from uh, The Conjuring. Same character. Uh, sorry, from Annabelle. Annabelle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's the same name. And it feels looks and feels like it, so I, I believe this is part of the Conjuring universe. It's just not advertising it in that way for some reason. I'm not, like, far. crazy excited for this one. I mean, the trailer's kind of meh. And, um, I I mean, I just don't. I'm not, I'm not quite on board for it yet. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, also in April is David Robert Mitchell's uh, Under the Silver Lake. And, of course, he did It Follows. Mm-hmm. So, oh, this one looks weird. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, of course, it's already got some Rotten Tomatoes stuff kind of come out of it already, which is not cre- really positive. The synopsis looks a lot more positive than the actual score does. So we'll see how it actually is. Uh, I don't care because I loved It Follows and a lot of that really like split audiences. Some people still hate that movie. I loved it, especially if he's got, I don't know. I need to look up to see if he's got Disaster Piece coming back for Under the Silver Lake because that's a score that I cannot wait to I listen like to. I like It Follows a lot, but I, I mean, the first time I saw Under the Silver Lake's trailer, I really just thought, well, this movie is just going to be weird for weird sake. Yeah. Uh, and in May, Michael Doherty of Trick or Treat and Krampus fame is doing Godzilla King of Monsters. So we'll see how horror-esque that gets. I am usually not a big fan of Godzilla movies, you know? I mean, I know they're classic yeah. and part of canon, but the trailer for this looks fantastic. It does. It's so good. And but I'm first... glad that they're bringing back the other monsters from those classic movies and it's not just Godzilla. We're going to have Mothra and, and they look stuff like there. so like hauntingly beautiful in yes. this film. Like I... I cannot wait to see this to see what Michael Doherty does with it. I'm well, a little hesitant anyway, so. because uh, the first, the trailer for the first Godzilla remake, like they happened a couple years ago with Brian Cranston, you know, that uh, looked super good too, but it just ended up being meh. We shan't speak of that. So we'll see. Uh, in June, we're getting Child's Play remake. TBD. Yeah, a lot of people are shitting on it. Um, but you know what? I'm not emotionally attached to the original at all. There's actually another movie coming out in 2018. It comes about in the spring, I think like March, and it's called Charles. Mm-hmm. And it's about a couple who move into an apartment and there's a doll left behind that looks suspiciously like Chucky. So, uh, I mean, there could be more than one Child's Play-esque kind of remake or reimagining coming out this year. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like, I don't know. They might have, they might miss the mark. This might be a misfire too, because I remember when like my buddy and all those dolls were coming out for like girls and boys uh, back sister. in like the eighties yeah. or whatever kid sister. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that was around this time. That was kind of a riff off of that. And there's nothing that I know of that's kind of like that right now. Right. So it's not like trying to like strike anything while the iron's hot. It's like a remake for a remake's sake, but it might end up being super good. Like it was or something. So I don't know. We'll just have to see. Um, we're getting uh, Annabelle three 
um, untitled so far as, as of yet that I can tell. Well, in, if they uh, go July. in the direction of what we've heard the plot's going to be, I think it might be actually maybe the best Annabelle yet. If they're doing the whole like Night at the Museum meets Annabelle thing, yeah, with Conjuring, um, then yeah. That could be good. Uh, in August, I didn't know this, but in August, we're getting a remake already of The Grudge. Yes. Yeah, I f- totally forgot that's coming out this year. Um, I also heard that it and can also be... Grudge. It's called Grudge, right. Um, I also heard that it could be sort of a prequel to the American movie and not necessarily a remake. Like, there's lots of buzz around it, but, I mean, obviously we don't know exactly what it's about yet. Okay. All we know is that, um, you know, Buffy's not in it. Well, also in August, we're getting the New Mutants, which is a you know Marvel Marvel movie, not Marvel Studios, but Marvel nonetheless. And it's yes, be, it's very horror esque. So that's as a Marvel comics nerd, this is going to be kind of interesting for me. So we'll see where I put my emotions on it. I'm not sure where to put my emotions. In September, we have It Chapter Two, which I am super stoked for. Yes, oh my God, I cannot wait. It is my favorite novel of all time, and that last movie floored me with how good it was. A lot of people view the second half, the adult portion of it, as like the not as interesting or, you know, just not as scary part of it because you're looking through the adult's eyes versus the children's eyes. So we'll see what they do with it. We'll see if they get past that. But I think that's a that's an issue with the source uh, rather than anything they're trying to do on screen. So we'll see what they do. Well, and I'm incredibly biased, so I can't say whether or not it's going to be bad or good. I, I enjoy both parts of the novel. So, I mean, I, I'm sure it can be equally as scary. And I know that some of the actors have come out now that they're finished filming and saying that, um, what's the name of the guy who plays Pennywise? He's one of the Scars guards, right? Yeah, Bill Scars guard. They said that he was like literally terrifying while filming. So, I mean, that should speak volumes. Yeah, they said it's really dark. And uh, they're really going all the way they, they, they can since it's going to be more geared at that adult level. Hard R. So we'll see. Um, and uh, obviously we're, we're also getting a Zombieland 2 in October, which I need to rewatch the original. I haven't seen it in years, but I remember really enjoying it. Yeah, so. that's funny. I liked it. And uh, Stranger Things Season 3 will be coming out. I still haven't watched season two yet. So I still, my, my f- the first season was my favorite. It blew my mind the first time I saw it just because... You know, it was just we were ready for that. Obviously, there was a need for the storytelling like that and the time that it took place and everything in our society. Season two didn't hit as hard, Um, but it continues the story and it was good nonetheless. Uh, So we'll we'll see what happens with season three. Well, hopefully before season three comes out, I'll sit down and watch season two. I should. I hear that it's it's good. Um, It gets pretty, pretty big, pretty epic. So something's not from your list that I'm really looking forward to. um, Brightburn. I think oh, looks yeah. fantastic. When is I that really, coming out? It's coming out in May. I mean, just May the 24th. Yeah, I, cannot, I don't know why that wasn't on my list, because that's something I really am interested in. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks really good. Yeah. Um, there's a movie coming out also in May called The Intruder that seems like it's going to be some nice throwback 90s horror adjacent, you know, mm-hmm. some stuff going on there. And um, I think that's it. I mean, like, it too, really, for me, is like the pinnacle of what I'm looking forward to next year. I've, I've really got to see it. I need that conclusion because I just, I love the first one so much, love the book so much. I've been looking forward to this forever. And with that and Pet Cemetery coming out, I was just talking to my husband the other night about like Stephen King adaptations. And a lot of them have been really hit or miss over the years. And I think that, people are starting to realize that he he's a good author and he has good stories and we can make good movies out of his work. Yeah, I feel like the best so, one is probably it, but the most important one is probably The Mist. I love The Mist. I do. I mean, and there's there's and that may have started this whole like king renaissance, right? Sure. Uh well, with Stranger Things involved too, but I think that I think moving forward we're going to have a lot more Stephen King coming up. I know that the, he wrote a short story with his son called In the Tall Grass, and there's a Netflix um, adaptation of that coming out too this year. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to 2019 for Stephen King and beyond. Mm-hmm. There was one more thing I was going to ask you about movies from 2018, because one of the first movies after we became friends that you made me kind of sit down and watch was a film called The Strangers. And uh, we both really enjoyed that film for... I don't know why I enjoyed that film because it's so Because it's scary as hell. But the sequel came out this year in yeah. 2018. Yes, and it I, did. And I had like it got so low ratings that I just like I couldn't bring myself to watch it. Didn't have Liv Tyler in it. Like, did you see it? Yeah, I did. I saw it in the theater. So, um, it's not as good as the first one. Um, what did you rate it out of star five stars? 
Uh, probably about a two and a half. Oh, see, I don't want to disappoint myself. So now, I mean, like, it has some good moments in it, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's still a a taut thriller, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not nearly as frightening as the first one. The, the things that I liked most about it was that it had some sort of eighties like throwback, just like every other horror movie these days does, you know. Yeah. But other than that. I just didn't care for it. Now, every time I read something from the horror community about Strangers Pray at Night, people are just like just throwing so much love at it. And um, I don't know why. So it was a really low point for me. But always the optimist, you know, and I, I would rather enjoy talking about things that I like more than I don't. And like I always say, when I watch a movie that I'm not quite fond of on that first viewing, I'm never afraid to go watch something for a second or even a third time. And I will I will give it some time and watch it again. But if you're expecting, you know, phenomenal work, stay away from it. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't enjoy it. OK, fair enough. Well, guys, tell us what you're looking forward to in 2019 and let us know if we got anything wrong in your opinion for 2018. And I mean, like there are some movies from 2018 that we missed. And oftentimes some of these under the radar films sort of like, you know, skip our attention Mm -hmm. and we will watch anything you tell us to pretty much. So uh, send those recommendations on and, you know, maybe at some point we can definitively rank these 2018 movies. But for now, I think that you got a pretty good idea of what we liked. And you can let us know what you think at the Film Flamers on Facebook or Twitter, or you can email us at, what's, what's our email address, Robert? TiredQueens at FilmFlamers.com. That's right. You can also go to our Patreon at Patreon.com slash the Film Flamers. That's right. Or just visit our website at FilmFlamers.com. All right. Well, it's been great, guys. And we're really happy with 2018, and we're looking forward to 2019. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, guys. And until next time, sweet dreams. <laughs>